Hello again, everyone. This is Joe Hinches with Beyond the Chart, and this is technical analysis of the stock market today. Today is Tuesday, February 10th. We're going to take a look at the markets the way we usually do, and then uh, we'll look at four stocks today First Solar, Micron, United Continental, and Melco Crown Entertainment. Okay, the Dow was up 100. About 140 points today, and it really was never down, I believe. You know, it opened up, and then, uh, you know, because yesterday's close was 17, 729, and the low today is right where yesterday's close was. So it was pretty much an up day all day today. So this reminds me, and I know I kind of use the title pressure cooker. This reminds me of a pressure cooker, and it's been building uh, kind of coiling, kind of that type of action in here. Let's take a look at the, uh, the S&P 500. Uh, here's the fan lines I've talked about before. I talked about these on the New York Composite too, and we'll get to that in a minute. But this just, I mean, this is classic. I mean, look at these last, the, the, this pullback to this fan line that was drawn from this, uh, off of this top here, off of this pivot point. So it comes down yesterday, comes right to it basically and then reverses up here today this looks like it's about to punch right up through this through this fan line and if it does that then I think we're on and as I mentioned on Saturday's post uh, you know that uh, basically the price action of last week looked like we may be launching something and we'll see if this kind of confirms that uh, let's see the next one, take a look at here is the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ's even looking a little bit, you know, even stronger. I mean, we're getting a close today above all of this trading action. Let me blow it up a little bit for you. Use my crosshairs. It kind of helps put things in perspective. So we now have the highest close on the NASDAQ since back here on December 30th. So it's the highest close of the year. And I think it's above the close 47.77. Yeah, so it's above that. So it's the highest close since back here on December 29th. So we are on the verge of, of pushing to new multi-year highs uh, on the NASDAQ. And the same thing on the, if we go back to S&P, I mean, we're not very far away from the all-time highs up here, uh, intraday even, uh, 2093. And we're at 2068 right now. So it's, uh, it's getting close. New York Composite, uh, let me go up to this. And I knew I, I, know I draw the, drew that neckline up here because I you know, thought this looks like a little bit of a, a head and shoulders consolidation type pattern. Now this is messier than over here. I can definitely still see some symmetries in here. It's just not perfect. But even if you ignore that, we still have this fan line type situation that's developing in here that looks like coiling action, uh, almost like a spring, like this thing is just getting ready to just, you know, pop right on out, out of here. And that's the way it's looking on the S&P 500 too. So uh, who knows, maybe it'll fail, maybe it'll, you know, drop bone back down. But, um, uh, you know, all I could do is look at it and say, here, here's what it looks like it's setting up on. Now, the Russell 2000, not, mm, you know, the picture's a little bit less clear, uh, not nearly a dynamic move, but, you know, back last week, we got this move where it, it punched up here on the uh, on the 5th, which was, what, Thursday, and it punched uh, to the highest close since, you know, highest close of the year, you know, so, uh, you know, it's, it got above all this trading consolidation in here, almost like a breakout and like we had a little pullback. So moving averages have crossed on all the indices, uh, I mean, uh, short term wise. I mean, we still got some work to do. I mean, it's going to take some some movement to uh, to get this thing to to go that way. Uh, we'll see. I mean, we're just there's some mixed uh, mixed signals that you see. I mean, the um, I know I've talked about the Baltic Dry Index before, and I talked about it, I think, a, a week ago Saturday. And it just went to uh, even lower. So there's only now only one day in a 30-year history of the Baltic Dry Index, uh, which is international shipping, where it was fractionally lower. So the reading was like 554. 
and and uh, the lowest reading was 553.5 or something like that. So literally, we are literally at the, you know, the lowest reading uh, in, in its 30-year history uh, of the uh, Baltic Dry Index, which I really have a hard time reconciling. I know people are talking about, you know, well, there was a glut of ships and, you know, the price of oil is low and, you know, the price of oil got low in 2008, too. So I, I don't know. It's, you know, get, definitely getting some mixed signals. Let's look at the indicators here. Short-term trading index. Uh, we're, you know, coming down on you know, the 10-day is coming down, but it's not about below 0.9 yet, not at an extreme reading. The VIX uh, dropping back down uh, naturally with the uh, the move of the uh, the market to the high side today. High low, a little bit of a bounce here uh, with today, but not very dynamic. We actually look like we're trending down a little bit on the high low. 57 more new highs than new lows. That's not uh, very spectacular for a 140-point uh, move to the high side. Uh, okay, let's jump in and take a look at the um, the four. Well, no, actually, I want to go to the um, uh, three ETFs. So we'll take a look at semiconductors. Okay, so semiconductors had a nice day today, and we're going to take a look at Micron here in a minute. Uh, you can see how this pushed up. It looks too like this is like some kind of sideways consolidation, and it. It's acting like it's trying to make a run for this trend line, kind of like it did here. Uh, so watching that, you know, the home builders, my gosh, I mean, the home builders, this is a new post-financial crisis high, high close on the home builders. So this is back, we're back, we're up in this territory up in here uh, where it was in 2007 before everything went, uh, went you know, um, went bad. Uh, I'm trying to keep my language, you know, good here. Anyway, uh, this is looking, you know, it's like, and I talked about this either Saturday or the week before, where you know, you, you know, if this market, if the economy was uh, heading in the tank, this would be rolling over, I would think. Now, there, maybe there's some other exogenous factors that are impacting this because of the whole dynamics of what happened with the housing market. Not really sure there. Uh, the financial um, ETF here it, it continues to push higher. Well, actually, it's really not. It's slightly higher than it was last Friday. Okay, so it's down yesterday, up today. Uh, again, we're getting a series of little doji bars, which is kind of indec indecisiveness on the trading, a little bit of a consolidation pause. Uh, and uh, we'll see whether or not it can continue to push to the, to the high side. Okay, let's um, let's jump in and take a look at our stocks. Let's look at First Solar. First Solar had a big day today. I mean, it was trading down early on, and then it just reversed. And I'm not sure what the news was, uh, if anything. And actually, I haven't gone to look at other um, uh, solar stocks uh, to see how they were doing. I think I think several of them. I think I did see Solar City up and. And some others, but this was a pretty solid move. This was one of the biggest percentage uh, movers of the uh, the ones I follow. So it looks like it's trying to turn. And uh, I don't know, you know, you're getting a little bit of this, you know, rounding bottom kind of thing that that's coming in. Uh, but you know, it's got some work to do because you know the uh, you know the 21 days still below the 55. Yeah, we're getting the short terms. Short term is crossing. But the intermediate term has not uh, uh, has not turned bullish yet. But you know, price has got to move first. The moving averages are lagging indicators, so uh, we'll watch to continue continue to watch this one to see if it continues to turn. And then the next one is Micron Technology, because uh, semiconductors big move here in Micron, and uh, so this is kind of a snap snap back, almost like a bear market type rally. Uh, really, uh, but it may be, you know, maybe something turning. Although I always, you know, I would hesitate to jump in on on something like this with a big move, a big wide ranging bar like this. Um, sometimes it runs, sometimes it runs, but it seems like more times than not, you just got the huge momentum uh, explosion here, and now you either consolidate sideways or pull pull back. So. 
We'll have to watch to see what it does. But again, the short term is still to the downside. Uh, and uh, although the, the long term, the 55 is above the 233. So the long term moving average is still uh, to the high side here on, on Micron. So it could be that, let me, let me go move back out of this a little bit. I mean, it's definitely in some kind of topping activity. You can see the trading range it's been in since, uh, you know, middle of last year. Uh, and uh, so this, the fact that the long-term moving average is still, you know, still to the high side, uh, we could be starting to get, you know, maybe uh, another leg to the, to the upside here if, you know, we've gotten, I haven't, uh, if this is the, you know, the pullback and that's all you get, you know, and, and maybe we're, you know, this is pretty sharp trend line, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. When I look at this and you say, OK, well, OK, it's broken a trend line. Well, that's a pretty steep trend line to break. All right. In here, not something you want to bank on. To me, I like seeing a flatter trend line uh, telling me that, you know, a turn is happening. Um, but, you know, it's still broken this trend line and uh, we'll see whether or not we get consolidation or whether it continues to run. All right, um, now that I overkilled that, let me, let's look at United Continental. Okay, this one is also, it's, you know, in an uptrend, uh, another big percentage movers. Basically, I looked at the four, four big movers today, uh, percentage-wise, that I was looking at. Uh, nice move to the upside, up three points on UAL. Uh, it's not closed back up above the 10. We got the 10 slightly below that, but that doesn't look like severe damage. Looks like we've just had a little pullback. It looks like we're bouncing right off the 55. Uh, it's pretty, pretty, you know, strong uptrend. And when I look at the, uh, you know, this is divergence over a fairly long term here, several, two months. And it could be that really, what that did was just drive this corrective action that we just got right down here because really where did this come down to around the 40 and so in a bull market you're between like the 80 and the 40 well that's a little bit like where it's at so it would be interesting to see does this come back up here and close above the 10-day moving average again uh, then this could start to get pretty interesting, especially, you know, you close above this, then you break this, you know, little trend line of this corrective action, and, you know, you're off and running again. Uh, let's see. The last one we're going to take a look at is Melco Crown, because all the casino stocks, I think, were up today. Uh, Las Vegas Sands, Wynn, uh, everybody's... Uh, and I, I'm not sure that there was any specific news, but, you know, these have really been sold off pretty hard. This looks like some kind of symmetrical triangle to me. At first I thought at first I thought this was like a head and shoulders and, and the, you know I was looking at you know this kind of action in here and thought that maybe we had some kind of head and shoulders but then this just didn't look symmetrical enough to me. So I kind of backed off of that and said, well, maybe something else is going on. And then, you know, you kind of look at this and think, well, maybe we got a little symmetrical triangle and we're breaking out of this. We do have a short term cross. We're trading above the 55. It looks like it's trying to pull the 55 to or the uh, 21 above the 55. So uh, it looks like we're trying to turn. Um, it's it's. Uh, it looks promising. It's got to get through this this headwind in here, though. These previous these previous points where selling came back in. I mean, if you look at it and say, well, okay, well, let me just draw lines to make it easy. You know, right there, you know, right in there. Okay, so in this little zone is potential resistance that this could run into, right up here at the top of the Keltner channel. So uh, we'll watch to see if something else sets up on this thing. So that's, that, that could get interesting. Okay, uh, that's it for tonight. Uh, what is today? Tuesday. Uh, so I'll be back on Thursday uh, with another market look. And uh, we'll just kind of go from there. Everybody have a great uh, Wednesday and Thursday. And uh, if you're watching this anywhere else but my website, head on over to the website. Check it out. There's a lot of stuff I've got going on over there. And... Um, if you're not a subscriber, subscribe. Just click on the little red box. It gives you access to the Trade Ideas webpage. 
and uh, I've got that PDF to download for you, the five essentials, and gives you uh, updates on uh, when I publish posts and all that good stuff. So, all right, everyone, have a great Wednesday and Thursday, and we'll talk to you on Thursday.